United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, Ms. Mayor, if you would do the roll call, please. Yes, I will. Gary Dunlap. Here. Joe Gittins. Here. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Shagosinski. Here. Kate Naren. Here. Tim Menninger. Here. Colin Trivet. Here. And Lisa Collins. Here. Okay, with seven of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. I'll so move. Is there a second? Second. I'll let you fight that one out. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Okay. I don't see anyone coming forward, so we'll move on to recognitions and thank yous. Salvation Army donation, Dr. Carlson. Well, before we welcome our special guest for the evening, I do want to make mention that we thank the Salvation Army of La Crosse for their recent $1,060 donation to the Home and Nutrition Services Department designated towards funding meals for students in need. So their continued support is greatly appreciated, the Salvation Army, so thank you. I'm going to just step out okay. here as we, we as we welcome. We have introduction of new staff. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. Um, the board, I know, doesn't always have that opportunity to meet our new employees as they immediately come on board. And so we take time at this time, right at the start of the school year, to, to officially welcome in a setting like this. And thank you so much for all of you being here tonight. The people that we invite uh, for this evening are employees that have joined this organization as of even as far back as last September of 2012. And so we, uh, you may have some tonight that as they introduce themselves, they have um, maybe not a real, probably a familiar face because they've been with us, or there's also some familiar faces because I believe we even have uh, had the fortune to employ some alumni. And that's uh, always a wonderful opportunity as well. So at this time, here's what we're gonna do, everybody. We're gonna have you come on up as a group. And we're going to um, line up so everybody can see you as well as the audience at home on camera, on TV. And, and we're gonna just ask, invite you to share who you are, your position with the district, and uh, just anything else that you're comfortable with sharing that helps us to uh, know just a little bit about you and, um, and perhaps want to share any experiences so far while you've been with us, that'd be fine too. So we want to take time to recognize and celebrate your decision for choosing us, which I have said to you before when you first joined us. Thank you for choosing Holman. And we're de so delighted to have you with us. So now, Come on up, everybody. <laughs> they're teachers, they're not shy. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have you come on over. We'll kind of see how we do. We'll just, we'll get kind of tight, come right here. And we're going to, you're gonna look out here and to the <coughs> board and audience. Yep, squeeze together, squeeze together. Yes, Gotta make room, everybody, come on. We can have the other half go on the other side if they. We want to make sure we get you all in for the large audience that's watching this evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, most of this group have seen many of them. Okay. So we'll, <laughs> uh, I, I will say that uh, for some, not all part of this group, but for many, part of the orientation at the start of the school year, uh, we were able to, able to uh, enjoy some lunch together but again not everybody up here but um, so you want to get us started sure why not hi my name is Tiffany Peters I am the new business education teacher at the middle school um, my husband and I live in Iowa and we both commute up here so it's 
not out of the cards that maybe someday we'll be moving this way. So <laughs> thank you very much. Hi, uh, my name is Carol Fieselman. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity, Dr. Carlson and staff to uh, be here to, with you today. And uh, I started actually one of the September 2012 employees uh, with the TMT office as a special needs driver. And uh, then I, I guess, I think it's a promotion to a school bus driver <laughs> this year. <laughs> um, but both, in both aspects, I totally and thoroughly enjoy being part of such an outstanding school district. Thank you. I would also like to say thank you for this uh, recognition night. And uh, I'm Judy Miller. I work at Sand Lake Elementary School in the special ed department as an EA and, and, and loving it. The school is beautiful. You should be very proud of that school. I've been around for a while, so I can say that. And I've been to many schools. I started loving education in Amory, Wisconsin. And I went on to UW Stout, graduate, graduated with a teaching degree, and then uh, went on to uh, Head Start, where I learned a great deal about special needs. Um, after uh, Head Start, I was a home visitor, terrific home visiting experience, going into homes and teach, teaching about parenting. And then I enjoyed learning and teaching Montessori. And I, right before uh, joining Holman, I taught uh, at Chalita. So very excellent uh, program there with the uh, autism program. So thank you for having me a part of your um, organization. And now I know where Holman is after all those years. I lived in Amory <laughs> and didn't know where Holman was. <laughs> Good evening, uh, my name is Nu Vang. I am the Pupil Services Coordinator. Uh, prior to being here, I was a school social worker in Wisconsin Rapids for five years. Prior to that, I was in school at UW-Madison where I got both my bachelor's and my master. And then prior to that, I graduated from the school district of Holman, 2003. <laughs> Good evening, I am Elizabeth Butler. I am the eighth grade math and social studies teacher in House S. And I just recently graduated from St. Norbert College in May. And I am also a Holman grad, went here K-12. So it's fun to return back to the school and work with some of my former teachers and still have some of my brothers in school. And <laughs> it, makes for, it makes for an interesting day. Um, but very fun and exciting, so thank you. Hi there, I'm a Skylar Frickleton. I am the vocal and general music instructor at the middle school. It is also my first year teaching. I am a recent grad of UW La Crosse just down the road. Um, very privileged to be here in this district and um, a wonderful opportunity to be teaching in an outstanding dis district such as Holman. Um, thank you for being so welcoming and I'm really excited to begin my career here. Hello, my name is Brittany Schilla and I am an education assistant at Evergreen Elementary. Um, prior to this, I was a substitute in the district. Um, graduated from the University of Minnesota Morris with a teaching degree for social studies and I also am very glad to be here. I went to school in Holman as well so it's good to be back seeing my old teachers and mm -hmm. staff members. Good evening, I'm Mike Robbie. I'm the assistant transportation supervisor. Uh, prior to this I did teach in a classroom 15 years in Minnesota and now I'm just on the end getting kids to and from school <laughs> and looking forward to it. Hi, I'm Liz Rosendale. I'm teaching physics and chemcom at the high school. I'm a 2007 Holman graduate. And then after that, I went to UWL and I had the privilege of student teaching at HMS. So that was fantastic and extra excited to be teaching full time at the high school now. So thank you very much. Hi, I'm Andrea Miller, a special ed teacher at Sand Lake Elementary. Um, I'm not from Holman originally, I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry, um, I'm sorry. from the Wassa area and um, last year I had the opportunity to student teach at Sand Lake for three quarters out of the year so it's great to be back. I'm not from Holman originally, I'm from around the Wassa area too. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jared Bagneski, I'm uh, the new adapted FIAD teacher and uh, regular FIAD teacher at the high school. I'm uh, also a Holman 2007 grad, so give it up. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm excited to be back. Um, looking forward to giving back to the community that has taught me so much, so thanks for welcoming me back. Hey everyone, I'm Eric Oden. I teach English over at the high school. 
Um, I'm also not a Holman grad. I'm from Madison, but I did go to UWL and graduate in 2011, and I'm actually really excited to be back in the area. Hi, I'm Charles Matthews. I'm originally from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, so on the east side of the state, not too far from here. I uh, recently graduated from Northern Michigan University. Who, know where, who's know, who knows where that is? <laughs> Probably not a lot, all the way up in the UP. So a little bit of backwoods, but coming down here, it's a great opportunity to be here, and it's just like home. Hi, I'm Ben Miller, uh, the new um, Administrator of Business Services. Uh, here from uh, originally from Michigan, uh, most recently from Madison. And glad to be here. The, I already feel the excitement here with everybody and uh, ready to get started. Hi, I'm Nicole Foley. I am one of the new French teachers at the high school. Um, I teach levels two, four, and five this year, so having a number of students that the different levels. And I graduated from UWL in 2011. Way back when, I graduated from DeForest High School, so definitely not this area, but near Madison, and that was in 99. And so I've had a different life experience, but I was happy to get my bachelor's and to be here teaching. Hello, my name is Svetlana Ott, and originally I'm from Russia, and I have been in the U.S. for eight years. I, have been teach I was teaching ASL at Western Technical College, and now I love teaching French at high school. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Shannon Crutt. I was hired last December, and I am Title I Reading Reading Resource at Prairie View in Sand Lake. I'm originally from Independence, Wisconsin. If anybody knows, it's a yeah. tiny town. <laughs> um, and I actually started my teaching career there. I taught there six years. Had a little girl, um, December, uh, excuse me, February of 2012. and. Just saw reading opening last October and had my master's in it, and I just thought it fit me really well. And I guess I'd like to thank the district kind of getting thrown in in <laughs> December. Both um, principals, Brian and Patrice, were wonderful, and I easily settled into my job. So thank you. Well, I did want to thank you all for accepting our invitation to come this evening. And we acknowledge how robust and difficult the um, employment and application process is in the district so you should be um, just very proud that you made it through the process and we're so very pleased to have you here as part of our, our district and we know that the focus on student learning will live with you and and that's where we um, what we look for each and every day and as a board we're here to support your efforts of course now that you've introduced yourself, I think they're going to get a picture, and you're, ha you're welcome to, to disperse after that. We understand you have a lot of things to do this evening. <coughs> and, uh, we do appreciate your taking time, though, to come and, and share a little bit about yourself. It helps the board get to know you a little better. So thank you. All right. We're going to do another row. Let's get just grouped together. Get, get close there, everybody. In the back row, make sure you're in there so we can hear it. Thousands of people tuning in. <laughs> both of them. Yeah, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and have a great year. Then I'll move on to budget input variables and best estimates. Uh, Mr. Clark and Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller, I think this is your first time yes, presenting. Welcome and thank you. We don't bite, we promise. So. <laughs> Except for Gary. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> So you may remember last year was our first time with this process with the board. And um, if I remember correctly, we did this in December. Anyway, it was uh, much later in the fall, if not in early winter, that we did this. But you remember, too, the budget uh, adoption calendar that you approved. 
uh, calls for us to do these steps earlier in the process. You may remember last year, too, there was lots of discussion on these input variables. That was very helpful to us, although I, reflecting back on last year, think that some of the discussion came because it was so new. And we didn't know what we were committing to when we said budget input variables. And I think by the time we finished the budget development process last year, we realized what this first step in the process really is. It's just to identify some of those basic variables that the board would like input on and that begin to at least create the foundation for a budget to be developed on. Things like enrollment, which you've heard us present to you many times on revenue limits and how the third Friday membership count is a, a, a large factor in determining our revenue. And so we'd like your input on some of those items. We hope it's a little bit uh, easier process this year because we're more familiar with this. It, it's a little bit easier for us anyway uh, to come to you with these variables. So what you'll see uh, uh, Ben present will be three sections. There'll be an enrollment section, <coughs> revenue section, and then some basic uh, expenditure input variables uh, that he's going to share with you. Um, and uh, I'll let him go through the tab. It's a little bit hard to read the, some of that up there. I think it's just because of the lighting. Um, he'll go through the columns. And I, I think when we talk about um, input variables like the enrollment, um, ben may be spending more time on something like the Third Friday membership than some of the underlying numbers that fit into that. But Ben, I'll let you uh, take over and <clears throat> we can take off here. Thank you. So uh, as, as Mr. Clark mentioned, this is the beginning process of developing the 14-15 um, budget. And it is a little bit difficult to see, but the columns that you see up there um, read uh, the 2013-14 budget and then followed by the 1415 budget, thank you, uh, to the right of it. And then the next column shows the change in the, in the percentage. And so uh, this first slide uh, deals with enrollment, number, number of uh, members, students uh, in, in the district. And um, as you know, the uh, third Friday September membership is, is counted, um, and that's uh, what is shown on the second line there, FTEs or full-time equivalents, that number for this year is not available yet. That was just this past Friday, and the numbers are still being compiled. However, um, at this part of the process, what we're using is best available information, which is based on past trends and some models that, that are available. So based on best information, and, and this will evolve in the next uh, months of the process, uh, we're looking at 3,900 FTEs currently, followed by about a 2% increase next year to uh, 3,977, or an increase of, of 77 um, members. <clears throat> the other number that um, uh, we look at is the summer school membership, which is expected to stay about <coughs> the same. And then the actual um, receipts, the uh, income to the uh, district is based on a three-year average, and so um, that those numbers come out a little bit different, but, but similar. That's looking at about a projected at a little over 2% increase to 39.55 with an increase of 82. Uh, also the open, we look at open enroll uh, and tuition out, um, that's uh, expected to be an increase of about 16 with the open enroll and tuition in uh, with an increase of about seven. And uh, Mr. Clark e explained to me that that's been running at about a, a two to one ratio, and that's, that's pretty consistent from, from past years. And so that pretty much summarizes the uh, budget input variables for the enrollment side of things. Are there any questions before we move on? Any questions? There we go. The next section are the uh, the revenues, and of course the that's driven um, very much by the revenue limit per pupil, and the current year is at 10,081, expected to increase to 10,156 with an increase of 75 dollars per pupil. And that's been set already, correct? That, that is correct. Yes. That was a part of last year's biennial budget, and they approved uh, for two years. So. Uh, we're, we're thinking that's going to be solid for next year. 
and then looking at the general equalized aid, um, projecting about a 2.6% increase in dollars and the equalized property values uh, increase of about 1.6% with the open enroll tuition rate. Um, and, and I believe that's a, that's a set number as well, if I'm not mistaken, of $150 or 2.4%. The special ed categorical aid rate is expected to stay uh, steady at 26% with no increase. Questions on that page? I have a question about the um, private vouchers program. If the open enrollment, will that be affect, will we be affected by that? So any student, if I know each school was supposed to get 10, so Aquinas may have gotten 10. I don't know what the, if that's come through yet, but is that going to impact budgets next year or is it already going to enter impact budgets this year so let me under make sure I'm understanding you correctly you're talking about the students who may leave Holman to attend on a voucher at a parochial correct and school. I think Aquinas was the one in the area that was approved for that and they said that two-thirds of the students who applied for it were already students and so I wondered if some of the students attending or we have no way of knowing well, I don't have a count on that I don't know if we have information um, Wendy, Wendy is waiting says she's hand. got some information on that which yeah Wendy if grab I, a mic Wendy thank you and I'm not sure if this is the right way place where this we would be adjusting for it but at this time Holman wouldn't be affected by that because you must have a population of 4,000 students oh. and we're under 4,000 and you also must be a school that is, when I do the school report cards, in the lower categories of succeed, or significantly not meeting needs. So because of those two factors, we wouldn't be a school. Well, good, thank you, because I know there's all kinds of questions out there about that, and it's good to have that clarification. So There is the other part of that, though, is what would our general equalized aid projection Ben had the state put more money into the equalized aid formula instead of into the voucher system and I, I don't have an answer for that though um, one thing that um, Ben and I talked about today was the uh, small increase to the revenue limit per pupil amount at 0.7 percent and uh, that really for many districts if you don't have increasing enrollment is uh, is the increase in revenue you operate on uh, the next year. We are anticipating, even on that three-year rolling average, uh, an increase in enrollment. So our revenue limit amount will go up uh, more than some uh, districts. Um, people have said before they're envious of us. Uh, because of that, I, I always say, but we have those students to educate. <laughs> so it's uh, that, that, that view, that perspective of things is only looking at the revenue side, um, not, not remembering that um, there's a child who's here now who needs services. Um, if the revenue limit amount uh, goes up less than the increase in equalized aid, remember that we, I and Jason have talked about the buckets. If the revenue limit defines our bucket and they give us more equalized aid, you have to take property taxes out. Mm -hmm. So that's a recipe for property tax reduction, not more money for districts. People will say, well, general aid is going up 2.6%. You should be able to meet all your expense needs. Um, it's really the revenue limit that defines the size of the bucket. You get that much money to put in, you just have to take taxes out. Um, so it's important early on as we look at these input variables that we understand the implications, which is, is honestly, if you look at the budget <coughs> calendar, the next step in this process. We take these input variables and then we put them into the formulas and uh, it, it kicks out for us a beginning of what's the overall budget gonna look like. So continuing on to the third, third of three slides, the other variables that we look at and, and we'll spend more time on uh, fine-tuning these are the expenditures at this time again uh, really looking at a projection model these are not set um, there this is for budgeting purposes is our salary increases of 1.68 percent and these would be based on norm normal increases um, 
retirements, replacement hires for this model, uh, looking at those um, staying about the same as, as in the past year. Uh, staffing levels for this, again, for this modeling procedure, um, the first round, plugging in a no change increase in staffing. Then the, the bet where there's um, obviously um, an area of that's identified as, as growing faster is uh, in, in all areas, in all um, school districts is, are, is health insurance, and we're budgeting that at 10%, with dental insurance staying fairly uh, stable at 1.5%. And Ben and I had lots of discussion about the health insurance, and it's not just school districts, but all sectors of employment where um, uh, the health insurance industry's response to the Affordable Care Act is actually driving rates up. and. Uh, it's not uncommon in the insurance industry when there's uncertainty. I think they err on the side of making sure they collect enough premiums rather than too little. And so it's an environment of uncertainty. We don't know that um, what's happening in our country now will actually drive the costs up, but they're not going to be on the short end of the stick if it does. And so. Um, Despite the changes we made last year, those changes uh, in health insurance were realized as savings uh, in this year. Um, next year, we're, we're estimating 10%. When we get industry numbers and get further on in the, the year and see what others are getting with it, uh, in terms of increase, that may, uh, may be adjusted. Uh, and then the staffing levels, that deserves a comment because last year there was uh, much good discussion around that topic. And I think you learned uh, uh, through experience with this new budget development process last year that a decision made on input variables at this time doesn't define where we end up. It just sets a beginning point, a reference point from where you can move after that. And so um, that's the administrative recommendation. Um, don't want to steal Ben's uh, thunder here, but this is uh, in our budget development calendar, the time where we present to you input variables, uh, hear your feedback, leave you walk away uh, from this for a couple weeks to think about it, and then we would ask for approval at the next meeting. And um, so if there are questions tonight or if there are questions in the next uh, week, uh, we sure can get information out to the full board on those. So can you just clarify what is meant by no change on the staffing levels? No reductions in current FTE staffing levels and no increases in current FTE staffing levels. But we would maintain the current levels. Correct. This is, you know, the, the, uh, Cheryl, I pause because last year that question was, I think, a point of some of the confusion because some interpreted levels to mean ratios the ratio of students to, the ratio of, and what we're saying here, uh, no change is probably not enough. Staffing levels measured in FTEs, full-time equivalencies, maybe is a better way for continue to grow with this process. Um, that's what we mean uh, here, is that um, no increases or reductions in FTEs, full-time equivalency of staff. And then the um, number for the salaries, the 1.68, where did that number come from? Um, it's a <laughs> bit of a best estimate on consumer price index. Um, in a post-Act 10 world, the mandated, not mandated, the allowable increase, maximum allowable increase in uh, base wages uh, it's defined by the consumer price index increase uh, six months prior to um, the year in which the new wages would take effect. So we're making our best estimate at this point that in uh, January of uh, 2014 we'll receive, uh, well, we won't receive it then. The rate will be based upon what they have available in January 2014. We'll receive it sometime in uh, April. And we're guessing that it will be 1.68. It was 2.17 a year ago. 3.16. So at this point a year ago, actually, you were doing this a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But we had come off of uh, the CPI at 3.16. And that's what uh, you ultimately um, approved for the most part of working <coughs> with our employees. But now you know it was 2.07. So you don't want to necessarily attach 
any of those numbers to this. And so this is truly just a best estimate relying on information. So just like a year ago, we didn't know where the 3.16 was going to go in comparison to. So, And if somebody's got a brother-in-law who's or somebody who's really good at forecasting what's going to happen at the economy, we can put in a different number. But um. Does that include all of those items like, um, <clears throat> uh, I'm trying to think, just in some of the discussions we've had this year regarding lane changes, also um, allowing for uh, mentorships and those kind of things. I mean, is that salaries, the 20... 28, 721 include all of those items that we give? So the question is, is the 28 the base wages or is it all forms of wages? Do you remember, It, it would be all forms. And my understanding is that the, the model takes into account not only consumer price index, but it also takes into account attrition. So you have retirees maybe coming out at the higher end of the scale and then newer younger uh, salaries coming in at, at you know at the at the other end of the scale and those are all factored in into the process so um, is this yes. something that came from that your consultant that you were working yes, with too so it is correct yeah uh, and, and the, that company serves as a great resource too so we're not out here um, trying to do our own individual best estimates but uh, they're examining what's happening at the state legislative level what's happening in the uh, economy as a whole what other I districts are using in terms of estimates so uh, in addition to the tool that they provide us they're a great resource as well but uh, thank you for that clarification then Ben and the question Cheryl that um, it's 1.68 on top of uh, more than those wages, those base wages that are considered in the uh, formula provided by the uh, Employment Relations Commission. Any other questions? So, so you've indicated weeks. that this will come back. So if there are any questions or concerns about these assumptions, that now is the time that we have that conversation because we don't want to find ourselves three months down the road saying, oh, I didn't realize we were going to do that Correct. or we aren't <coughs> going to do that. So this will come back in the next meeting for approval? Correct. So, okay. All right, thank you very much. Then moving on to school district report cards. Wendy. And as Wendy gets said, I believe there's an updated paper copy in her packet because we've been, since she turned this in a week ago, uh, some more information had, as you know, became available. So, oh, did um, our number go so up? anyway, thank you, yeah, Wendy. You're right. Since I turned it in a week ago, when I had to make the board packet, the other districts and comparables weren't available. So the update has that information now in it for you. So what's new this year is a district report card. And here's a copy of Holman's. Important to note, although the press gives a lot of information with that number in the upper left-hand corner, for us, the information that's most valuable is the other information because that guides what we need to do. So my report is looking a lot at the district report card and what the data means. So the first priority area is student achievement. And the student achievement score is based on a three-year score, which is weighted, the most current year weighted a little more heavily. And you will see on this chart that I've compared us to the MVC plus the other two districts that we normally compare ourselves to and Holman is above the MVC plus two in reading, math, and the total score. And it's also mm -hmm. above the state average in reading, math, and 
and the entire score, which it's quite hard to read that dark blue up there, I'm sorry. Then if we look at student growth, again, it, it is based on a three-year average. And Holman is just a snapshot of that part of the report cards on the upper right-hand side of the slide. And you will see that as a district, we just missed the MBC plus two average, and, but we are above the state average in reading. We are above the state and the MVC in math, and then the district's total score is above the state and MVC. Then looking at closing the gaps, and that's for our students in our district are mainly our economically disadvantaged, our students with disabilities, and our English language learners. So when we look at where we're at as far as closing the learning gaps for those students, we are and this is our area for improvement and our PDSAs reflect that we are below in re the MVC and the state in reading and math and closing those gaps. We are above the state in the graduation rate and our total is above the state average. Then the on track for a post-secondary if it's kind of hard to see that top portion, but high school is, is evaluated on graduation, student attendance, and ACT. Elementary schools, their on-track measures are the third grade reading and attendance, and middle schools on-track measures are eighth grade math and attendance. And on the chart you will see that we are above the MVC and the state average. And finally, that index score that is on the upper left-hand side, you will see that I do not have a state average, but we are above the MVC. <clears throat> and this next slide shows our schools. Last year, we had three schools that were meets expectations, and this year, we, are, we have two schools that meet expectations, and then we have um, four schools that exceed expectations. Um, of our schools, um, Holman High School, Evergreen, and Prairie View made large gains. Middle School made gains compared to last year, and Sand Lake dropped uh, just a, a very slightly and Viking also had a decrease from last year. So what are we doing with this information? And that's the important part, and that's why we really need to look at that right side of the report card. Since, you know, all throughout the summer, I know I've met with buildings and we talked about, you know, what the information mean, means and what it'll mean for us but more specifically through our PDSAs looking at how can we in that gap area close our gaps but continue to help all students grow and increase our achievement. For parents, families, and community, um, the October Visions newsletter will be explaining the, the school report card. Um, the district website, each building has been updated with their school report card and information on how to read the report card and then the information here this evening. <coughs> and this is just additional places where you can get information related to the school report cards for to learn more about them. And when I think about assessment data, we must keep in, in mind that this is reflective of our WKCE for the most part. And as our buildings have looked at this, we've analyzed the data, but we also use other assessment data to help us create our action plans within our PDSAs. 
So questions. Are there any questions? No additional comments at this time. Just waiting for questions and and. Um. You know, I just would like to say we, uh, you, as a district, we pride ourselves in being a data-driven school district. Mm -hmm. And I know that some educators feel bad about the results of their individual schools. And I just, when they mentioned that to me, I just said, you know, this is to be used to reinforce the good things we're doing and to maybe work on improving in some of the other areas and so modeling after some of the schools that had those gains in the previous year is a great thing that we can be doing and and the board doesn't look at this as a one size fits all kind of thing we know that that's the use of it and data is supposed to be used to help us that's not for thing. punishment or any of those kind of things so I know that you're doing some of those things and I appreciate that and I you know we looked at the new staff we had here this evening and these are things that um, we are going to be seeing more it's more the assessing assessing mm -hmm. assessing um, but it's really about student learning and um, if we can help our staff do that that's what these numbers right. are to be used for and nothing more I think definitely it's, it's really a tool for us so yep so thank a, you Wendy you're absolutely correct just a tool to give us more information about what we're doing thank you so then moving on to summer school report we have Carrie and Sue and Darcy are here this evening, so let them take it from here. There you go. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and happy autumn. <laughs> Um, this evening we are here to report out about about summer school and I'll share the elementary portion with you um, it was an exciting year that's for sure we um, had a great turnout so um, in your PowerPoint presentation you can see the various classes um, that we had during summer school uh, the number of sections that we ended up with and the various staff members we did have all but three staff members come directly from our district so it was a nice turnout of um, our own staff who wanted to continue working with students over the summer um, this year one of our biggest changes which I'll get to in another slide is that we had the students who needed additional support in reading or math definitely take those classes we assigned them to those classes but we offered more enrichment classes so if a student only needed reading adventures or additional support in reading then they got to choose two enrichment classes if they needed both reading and math then they could select one enrichment class so there were there was a lot of selecting this year so this is just giving you a, a glimpse of some of the classes that kindergarten students were offered this year in addition to the reading and math additional support And here's our first grade classes. Um, again, the same format was used through, from kindergarten through fourth grade. So the various, uh, healthy cooking was a pretty popular class. <laughs> so <laughs> um, thinking we need to maybe have a couple of those classes next time. It's just nice to see having some enrichment opportunities for the students. Right, and the teachers were excited too because then they got to teach some things that are not, you know, necessarily in the core. They tried to bring in as much as they could from the core into those classes and do a lot of writing and incorporate reading and math whenever they could, but still do some of those things that they really love doing. Third grade, I know they really loved being outside. The nature detectives and let's take flight classes were outside. Uh, we lucked out with the weather we had we had beautiful weather never had a day where we had to be inside because of rain so it, it was great we had kids up in the woods and um, out on the fields and the soccer fields in the back of Viking so it was really fun and I never knew you could make such things with duct tape either the things that they were making out of duct tape 
It's unbelievable. And did you know how many different types of duct tape they actually have, yes, different patterns? Are. It's crazy. My granddaughter would come home with duct tape. One of the girls on the bus must have been doing it. Mm -hmm. She'd have different gloves every day. Yes. <laughs> I learned a lot. <laughs> so. Um, the nice thing, too, um, about summer school was that I did list the staff there. Um, I would like to thank the education assistants that we had. We could not do this without their support. Um, also, food service. Um, they provided breakfast for us and definitely transportation. Many parents said they would not have been able to send their children to summer school without those services being provided. So I want to say a special thank you to them. And we also had some volunteers, again, help us out this year. So just very excited to have all the participation we did speaking of participation our attendance went up um, a great amount I believe it's due in part to the enrichment classes that were offered and students being able to select those classes but last year you can see we had 550 students at the elementary level and this year for summer school we had 740 students at Viking Elementary so a really nice turnout some of the changes in 2013 from the past, um, we did have a different location this year. We needed to make that change due to the high enrollment. So for three years, we were at Prairie View, but then um, moved to Viking. Um, there were more enrichment classes available, as I mentioned. Um, and then, as I said, students could also select enrichment classes. Because of our high enrollment, we did ask teachers to do additional supervision. So teachers did end up um, spending more time before school, after school, um, and in preparation assisting. So that was greatly appreciated as well. Some types of communication we had with parents. I did ask all of the staff members to write a letter of introduction to the parents so that they would know who was working with their child throughout the summer. Um, there were different types of communication depending on the grade level. So there were such things as um, communication logs sent home, some pre and post test results, uh, a lot of pictures that were sent home or emailed. Um, and then I also did a satisfaction survey again at the end of summer school. And overall, we had really positive comments. Probably the biggest thing that said we needed to improve was the traffic flow and the congestion. Be again, it was due to the high number of students and then parents coming to pick up their students. Um, so I would say that was the, the biggest thing. And then um, just you know deciding how we're going to do that for the future. So we've tried having a meeting a couple of times, but other things had come up. And we'll be getting together soon to start planning for next year already. So look forward to having a number of elementary students join us again next year. Thank you. That's the elementary portion. All right, we'll move right into the middle school. Uh, just want to focus on, again, on the changes that we had. We were lucky enough to also have increased enrollment. We were uh, at about 30 students in every single one of our classes. We were maxed out, and that's good because we, we have worked very hard over the course of the past five years to specifically identify students that are in need of additional academic support and also expanding our enrichment options when it comes to our TAG students and how we can get them to also be growing. So a couple of changes. You can take a look at our staff that assisted us this year, and we'll take a look at um, some of the classes that we had that were, that were new. Remember that mandatory classes, any of the students that didn't meet our promotion criteria uh, according to our handbook, and then we do individualized learning plans with those students to make up the learning objectives that they didn't get over the course of the year. So you can take a look at our attendance and how that differed from 2012 to 2013. And you can see that some of our areas really stayed the same. Um, some of the areas that are variable uh, from year to year tend to be our uh, cognitively disabled autism program and also our advanced math. Advanced math, remember, is, are just those students that are identified via our policy uh, to skip a grade level from fifth grade math and go 
directly into seventh grade math. So we want to make sure that we provide the scaffolding and support for those students to make sure that they're able to make that jump as they're also making the transition to the middle school, which is a very exciting time for them. You can see that um, we added co uh, courses in social studies and science. A lot of teachers are talking about how beneficial it might be for students to get some pre-teaching and re-teaching of concepts they had already had, as well as concepts that were to come in the next year. So it'll be very, it'll be very interesting for us to have some further discussions with our social studies and science teachers over the course of the coming year and seeing if they're having some of these students that had academic struggles coming in uh, with more knowledge and more background knowledge specifically in those topics. And then we also had a TAG Academy this year focused specifically on communication, uh, writing specifically, and hopefully you got a chance to see some of the fantastic things that they were doing featured in the Courier. They did everything from archaeological digs, had some professors from UWL come over, and did a study of macro invertebrates in Halfway Creek to judge the, the healthiness of our surroundings. So they did some, some really fantastic things, and we were really excited to offer that for the first time this year. You can see that in ELA Math, Special Ed, Science and Social Studies, uh, we had 116 students that were in there. So like the elementary schools, we experienced a little bit of growing pains and had to make some things work, but we did it and offered great programs for those kids. So again, that changing of uh, adding the pre-teach, reteach, and the TAG class that occurred in 2013. And our parent communication, we had weekly newsletters where all of our staff uh, had a chance to submit those things and then they went home to parents so they could actually get kind of a more holistic view of what we were doing in summer school across the board. And then those weekly work samples kind of took a page from the elementary schools and those fantastic folders that they sent home with the kids did something very similar to that so parents could expect those work samples coming home every Friday with the kids and we got rid of some of the postage costs associated with sending those through the mails we had in the past so that's the middle school good evening uh, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the high school summer school um, this was my first year with summer school as Miss Groning um, had it for a number of years um, so kept a lot of the the uh, classes and courses that she had created. Um, summer school at the high school is a little bit different as we are looking at credit obtainment. So our enrichment is allowing uh, maybe students to take a class early and make some flexibility in their schedule along with students who maybe failed a class and need to recover that credit so they can ma uh, maintain their graduation status. Um, like I said, we didn't stray too far from uh, the courses that have been offered in the past and some of the support that we've been able to offer. Um, and our band and choir and orchestra, as you can see, uh, continues to grow. Um, they're starting to become more competitive, and so we use some of that time in the summer uh, to prepare them for that competition. Um, the PE course, that fourth um, class, is, is a class that we use based on our student need. Uh, the previous year, we needed a need in language nine in order to get some students that uh, credit. Um, this year, it was PE that we needed. So um, we are able to adjust based on uh, the student needs. Um, I was also able to um, have an intern this summer. Jordan Wood was my intern. Um, he's going to school through Viterbo um, and was able to do a lot of um, uh, connecting with students, connecting with teachers, and he was definitely my daily contact with parents um, because attendance is very key at summer school at the high school level. Um, and so he was able to communicate with parents when a student was not there um, to make sure that they were maintaining um, their ability to earn credit. Any questions? All right, well, thank you so much for all that you did. It appears it was another successful summer school. Okay, then parent transportation contracts. Beth is up for that. Beth, I think this is your first time presenting to us as well, so welcome. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so excited. Again, we don't bite, we promise. Okay, you guys, you didn't exit this. <laughs> Except Gary. Except Gary, yeah. <laughs> I have two parent contracts that have been uh, brought forward in the years past, so it's just a continuation from the past years. Oop. 
The first one is a parent that is taking a special ed student open enrolled to on Alaska. So this is the same we did last year with a total of $360 for the year. I have, uh, ah, I got it. <laughs> and the second one is a, the student now is in high school. The parent transports this student into an alternative school in La Crosse. This has been done for many, many years. It is in the best interest of the child for the parent to transport this one. And this came to $2,160 for the school year. Okay. And these are these on the consent agenda this evening? They are not. They are not, I but they will be coming. They will be, yep. So are there any questions? So I think these are statutorily required to do, or the cost Correct. to the district yes. would be more if we would take Definitely. on the transportation yes. of these students. So Definitely. Correct. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then we'll board member reports and discussions. So I'll call on board members in order of roll call, and they can give any um, committee reports and updates that they may choose. First, Gary Dunlap. I never get to be first. You are tonight. Oh, good. Uh, did a set of finance uh, committee notes from 819 in your Dropbox. Other than that, I'd just like to welcome all the new employees and the ones that came tonight. I appreciate them coming. It was not really nice to meet them. And it was really nice to see all the Holman graduates coming coming out and teaching at Holman and paying forward and, and wanting to come back to Holman. It says a lot about our community. That's all I have. Hey, thank you. Mr. Gittins. No comments. Okay. Mrs. Jagosinski? Uh, I wanted to uh, echo what Gary said. It, it's always um, interesting because the employees, the, the young college grads look younger and younger every single year <laughs> when they come through. When I saw Elizabeth Butler, I was thinking, shouldn't you be at Evergreen with me helping you with reading like you know, 15 years ago? But anyhow, um, it's just really nice to see them and, and uh, meet them. And every year it's I don't know it's encouraging because they all seem so fired up and ready to go and um, I just hope they feel welcome and um, the other thing I wanted to say is a very very big congratulations to the special fester for Oktoberfest who is from Holman this year and I understand it was a um, top secret until yesterday and then this morning it was on the front page of the lacrosse tribune <laughs> however I must um, play bunco with some top secret women because they knew about it last Thursday at bunco so um, <laughs> The young man's name is Connor Ellis, and I understand he's at Brian's school at Sand Lake. And um, how cool. So I wanted to give a big shout out to Connor Ellis. So I'm very, very proud of you, Connor Ellis. And I cut out your picture from the paper this morning. So oh. way to go. That is awesome. Represent Holman. And I hope you have an awesome week as a special fester at Oktoberfest. That's just for you, so that's all I have. Well, thank you. This is Mayor. Um, Student Achievement and Learning Committee met last week. Um, basically, just to set our agenda for the year, we have some items that are coming up, and we welcome Jordan Wood and Colin Trivet, who are new to our committee this year, and we're very grateful that, that they are serving us. So just looking forward to that. Um, as always, if anyone has input as you see what's coming up, let me know. This. Friday and Saturday I'll be in Madison. It's the first meeting of the resolutions and policy for the WASB. Um, the 15 delegates from around the state were getting together and so I'm looking forward to see what those resolutions are and, and um, as I find them out I'll probably shoot some quick emails out to you so that if there's input that you would like ahead of time um, I can represent you well. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Um, Mr. Menninger. Uh, just uh, real quick comments tonight. The reception before the meeting with all the new staff uh, and echo what everybody said was absolutely wonderful. Uh, the energy, the enthusiasm, the excitement just says that uh, Holman's going to continue to be just an absolutely top school district and uh, uh, fun as always. And certainly encourage the staff uh, to, to come to any board meeting. Uh, you know, I said a couple of times we don't bite and they're always certainly welcome and uh, always always good to hear from them. And, and then I just want to piggyback on something um, Anita had mentioned too about the youth of some of the uh, graduates. 
it seems to me that when I was in school, all the teachers were really old. <laughs> um, but as I know some of them now, the reality was as they weren't really old, I was just really young. Yeah. So uh, it's all in your perspective on the world, I think. So certainly welcome to all the new staff. So. Well, thank you. Um, Mr. Trivet. Yeah, just echoing what everyone else said, um, meeting with all the different new teachers just out uh, before the meeting. It was good just to hear all the comments about the district and how they're fitting in with their classrooms, how they're enjoying the students, and just getting all the help that they need. It's always good to hear that. And then also, just a quick reminder that homecoming week is next week, so I hope to see everyone out for the game and then the various events throughout the week. So. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Collins. I, too, wanted to just mention the new staff issue. Um, I wonder what it was like for the teachers that have been around for a while to have those young people come in and how that made them feel. But I think that new students offer, or new teachers offer a lot to folks that have been around for a while and teaching them things in addition to um, the more seasoned staff teaching the new people. And I don't know, I, I, whenever I get a new person starting in a department that, I've worked, that I work in, it's kind of neat. I, we, we try to mentor them, but a lot of times they bring things to the table that help us, so it's kind of neat. It's kind of neat. It is. Thank you. I echo that, too. The, the new staff just enrich our school district, I think, with their new ideas and energy, and some of them, I think you could see, though, we had a variety of um, ages, I guess, and experience of the staff there, and it just reinforces that we work really hard to ensure that the best qualified teacher, the best qualified staff member is who we hire, not just necessarily the first one starting out because we may be able to save a few dollars that way. We really focus on ensuring we have the most quality, qualified staff in our classrooms. And that just kind of reinforces it when you see the range of, of the staff that come. Um, I also would note that at our places is an invitation to the pork feed part of homecoming. Homecoming is a big deal, that pork feed. Every year we receive a significant gift um, that goes to the foundation, and the foundation uses that for the Viking Fund for Excellence, and it goes right into the classroom to help our staff um, be able to provide supplies or admissions or things that they would have to take out of their pocket, and it's just a small token um, for them to be able to offset some of those costs. So um, if you aren't able to go to the game, you can always stop by and pick up a to-go. I know I've seen people do that. I've done that in the past, too, or, or just um, if before the game. I know that the neat thing is we always offer, don't we always offer the leftovers or the, the food to the op opposite team? And sometimes they accept and sometimes they don't, <laughs> depending on the outcome of the game sometimes. But. <laughs> But it's just kind of a neat, um, neat thing, and it's you'll see our staff there, and they're there as volunteers, and it's just, and then you also see the sponsors that we have that are there to support us um, in the community. So it's a nice thing. I would note that um, in from our uh, personnel and governance um, committee, and I'm going to go to some comments related to that. But we. Uh, our committee is bringing forward the idea of looking at a teacher compensation model that is different than the one that we're using currently. And um, we want to make sure before Dr. Carlson, before he's charged with going out and putting a process in place, that there is um, consensus by the board that we should look at a different model. Um, we've had those discussions about the current model that we're using where we've got the lanes and the steps that we're currently using to reward staff for years of service and for additional professional development. Um, but I think it would be appropriate for us to discuss the board's um, interest in having um, Dr. Carlson move forward with that. I think it also establishes why do we want to do this as a board, and then Dr. Carlson would take that information and seek inf input from other stakeholders, because that why are we doing this will help us, I think, get to the what kind of model do we want to look at. So really.
just opening this up for some gen general conversation um, and it could be nope we like the model we have we should stick with it or are there benefits in looking at different models so I will just put that out there for you to start to discuss dr. Carlson did you have any other no I think you covered it I think at the personal governance committee uh, you already alluded to this but I think the uh, kind of a recommendation was for the board to support evaluating the need for so really evaluating first exploring um, or examining and then pursue alternative compensation models as necessary and appropriate so it's it's really an examination first of what we have and then depending on that it's a exploration uh, research of looking um, at perhaps some alternative models and um, as Cheryl said again it would be something that I would be charged with and I would be planning an, an upcoming board meeting to share with you a process and uh, but that felt it was important I don't want to uh, go down this path unless there's interest in doing so and and I noticed that just the question of why is there an explanation at this point that maybe the public would benefit from like why is our district looking at this in terms of why is it in your committee now where did all of this come from um, what's the reason well I think it was in the committee because of some of the challenges with the current um, one-size-fits-all so there has been some um, maybe I don't want maybe interest from board members individually and we've had some conversation about should we just be continuing to reward years of service and then just unilaterally also rewarding um, if they take college credits is it any college credits or is it college credits directly related to their subject that they're teaching that would receive that recognition and under the current it's pretty much any kind of college credits I mean dr. Carlson does approve it but um, current practice is that if they take any credits then they can move in the lanes and then we have that group of staff about a third isn't it of our staff that have yeah. years of experience and have moved as far as they can in the lanes so they're kind of stuck in that one corner um, and this year we saw I think the compensation increase was very minimal for um, that was, was I don't want to say the percent because I'll get it wrong but, um, I think that again just uh, it, it's maybe a little bit of a philosophical check-in and um, mm -hmm. at this point I think it's been a number of years uh, that really uh, sitting down and really having a conversation and taking time to really look at how are we uh, there's no question compensation is um, a way that um, some people view as being recognized for the outstanding and great work that they do there's uh, I think we just need to accept that and, and admit that so uh, with that though it, it is is there a better way to be to recognize and to support and our employees and our teachers through a compensation model and um, so that's uh, I think it's a little bit Ms. Merritt kind of what what does the board feel and I want to I want to say as less as I can right now because it's really more how do you feel right now about this um, one thing that it, that's in the back of my head is whenever we this is a major I think this is a major kind of let's look at this because this has been around probably since the beginning of time in public schools or whatever so it's huge so one thing that I'd want to make sure the committee does or what we do when we look at everything is to ask the questions of where is our input coming from our Board of Education has input our community has input I want to make sure there's good input from our staff leaders um, make sure that we look at other models and make sure that we see if other districts are trying different things now how does that affect how does that affect a lot of things does it affect improvement 
Overall, that's the question. The improvement in, in classrooms, in the district, does it affect morale? Yeah. How are we identifying <coughs> things objectively and not subjectively? And I'm shooting out a lot of stuff here. But when we begin to look at different models, that's, I'm fine with that. Looking at new stuff is always good. We need to pursue what else there is. But I think input is critical, and I'd want to know what everybody thinks about these ideas and then I would want to see the proof in the pudding where people who have tried it before um, I, I would not I would not be able to make decisions without any of those things and, and I think all of those pieces are critical at least I'm just speaking for myself for me I'd like to see uh, certainly see the, the the way we handle uh, salaries and increases simplified <laughs> to something a little more we can handle a little easier and I, I still think that experienced teachers should be rewarded for being experienced teachers but I also feel that there should be a cap on on longevity um, you know I, I don't think they can see an increase for 35 continuously for 35 years or whatever it is. Um, but I think simplification of the of the method how we figure salaries and I think that needs to be done it's a little complicated I don't understand it <laughs> I'm not saying a lot <laughs> others I, I would I think you put it really well Kate I couldn't have said it any better I would want input from all of the parties that this affects and it is a huge <coughs> deal and it, it it looks really really good to say let's look at another model and that the model we have isn't necessarily the best model um, for us right now but what else is out there but there are so many pros and so many cons I would want to look at those really closely and see how they've affected the districts that they're um, it, at use in right now really close I would want to I would want us to look at those really closely <laughs> because there are some things look good on the surface and when you look a little deeper um, they can have some devastating effects when you put them into practice so yeah I would I would agree with you 110 percent I think too with that said as the committee begins to receive this input I'd love to be kept updated on it but I mean as soon as you can you know anything that we can pre-read oh here's a model here here's what here's the input we got this week and this is what people said I mean I'd, I'd like to stay very close to this and would we not have a board member on the committee um, I'm not volunteering. I'm, yeah, I'm just going to, uh, tonight, um, I think it was the hope, at least of the committee, to get a general sense of moving forward and less about the specifics to the how the process looks. I appreciate I'm taking notes, and I appreciate the, the input, but I think um, discussion was then charged with me with coming back, sharing a process, and then getting some reaction uh, further reaction from you as well before uh, before proceeding so that what I'm saying coming. though I think is it goes hand in hand with me so if I'm approving a change I want to know that the input is great and I guess I don't I'm a little bit unclear maybe you could explain that too I don't know if the public knows that at this point is it a committee that's doing this or is it I haven't come back to you yet and shared we don't know that yet yep okay this is just a the the okay. idea of and uh, and that I think the intent would be for me to come back and share with you perhaps a process and then get a reaction from you on that okay. and um, trying to separate I, I certainly appreciate understand the importance for <coughs> wanting to uh, um, include you know stakeholder this the stakeholder and, and so on and and uh, but tonight was more about getting a sense from you on the need to do this and should we move forward and less about how if that makes I think that's going to be a that that has yet to come well, you have to you have to let us know how if it's, if it's very difficult to manage uh, from your perspective then you have to let us know that too that has a big impact on whether we should look at this or not if, if you bring it forward because you think it's difficult to manage and difficult to handle 
from you from an administrative point, but that has so, some weight on it as well. If you feel like it's it's very easy to handle, that has that should have some impact in what we do, I think. But I, I sense that you're saying is it's it's a little difficult. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if I'm saying that at this point. Um, just uh, really trying to listen first to all of you. Yeah, I have a, a question. So, can you just reiterate, like, are there two, three main goals of why to what you what you're shooting for with a new model? What would ideally what would you be looking for? What would be the outcome? Or is that what you're looking for us to give you some? I think that's trying to uh, give the opportunity for you first to share and I think that's kind of what the discussion back in the personal and governance committee was as well come to you and just get a, a sense of uh, where you're at on this and uh, if it would be out of tonight if it would be helpful well actually to help us move forward to do to do that please I would be happy to do that come back with more of a uh, presentation and plan, even process and, and, and goals. But um, so just shy of, shy tonight, this was not intended to be any administrative recommendation tonight. That's why it's, it's placed on the agenda where it is, truly under board uh, comments um, and com out of committee. And maybe it's not why should we do this, but what would we want a compensation model Right. What would reflect? So what would you want it to reflect, to, to accomplish? I would think something that would be fair um, as far as the, the output, you know, um, mm -hmm. quality staff, uh, you know, um, whether they're going above and beyond and, you know, the educational piece. I, I mean, I think there is recognition to um, loyalty and being with the the school district, you know, I think that longevity piece is a, is a really good factor, but is there mentoring involved? You know, is there other other factors to longevity that are maybe making it more valuable than just being around, you know, just being there, but maybe me a mentoring component or something like that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Something me measurable and consistent maybe over time. And Tim? I, I guess you know, and as I've been listening, and my thoughts on this is, is the, is we, you know, strictly kind of staying to the question why. I think why is, you know, we look at the challenges we had this last year with our, our budgeting, and in the, the current system just did not work within the current state framework. Um, you know, and we had to look to do some exceptions as a board um, to make it equitable for the teachers, and I think that challenges why. Um, you know, the, the, the status quo is, is, I've always been a, don't do the status quo just for the sake of that's the way we've always done it. We need to continually ask ourselves, why is this the best way? And that requires an evaluation. And maybe we come back to this as the best way, but we have to continue to challenge it and not just accept it. And I think that's important as well. And then is um, also I look at all the, the bright talent we had in the room earlier tonight and our current system and correct me if I'm wrong, but we have some um, groups that are compensated well above the, the current um, average here in the area, and then we have some that are in areas that are below the average. And I think, you know, when we you talk about fair and equitable, our system right now has created an imbalance that there are some groups that are compensated well beyond the MVC average, and there are some that are below the MVC average. And, can we look somehow, and I don't certainly have the answer to how that should look, but I think it's worth exploring, and I think that's to answer the question. I don't know what it should look like. I don't have nearly the expertise or the experience to even come close to saying that now, but I think it should be worth looking at. Mm -hmm. And you're right in tune with what I was going to say, Tim, is I think it, there are a lot of new models, as Mrs. Mayor mentioned, out there that people are looking at, and it would be, I think just a status quo kind of thing for us to not take a look at them and say is this something that could bring some value to our district but we may very well come back and say the current system we have um, is the best system although some people have said 
it's not sustainable. I know that's not a, a, a popular word, but it may not be sustainable. And maybe there are ways I look at recruitment and retention and reward and incentivize um, our staff as, and we're talking mostly here about the HEA, but um, we could be looking at this for some of our hourly, um, which is more of a traditional kind of, they're using traditional models for that. But um, I would, that's what I would like to see is something that appropriately rewards our good staff for the quality work that they do and incentivizes them to maybe go above and beyond. Um, so those are kind of my goals in seeing a model, but good discussion, Dale, I, do you have enough? I, I think what I've, what I've heard, <laughs> just an informal consensus is, I didn't hear anybody opposed to exploring, to examining um, our current and exploring. So that's helpful. So then the next that, does that fulfill what the committee had to, was looking yes. for too? Mm -hmm. And then your next step would be to bring back a process to the board and share that process with the board, um, yeah. and bring maybe a, some clear goals, objectives and objectives, goals with right. that. Okay. Thank you. I Wonderful. Just no, I just noticed on um, your August, I think it was August fourteenth minutes, you were talking about um, inviting more participants to be part of your committee. I think that was one of the like committee membership. Oh, that is that the personnel and governance committee that uh, we're inviting more people to be a member of that committee. Okay. But that committee won't necessarily be the committee that's working on this okay. compensation model. I see. Okay. So it came out of that committee. Okay. And Anita said she wasn't necessarily volunteering. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> although you could nominate her, she walked out of the room. Right. There we go. <laughs> Okay, then also I would note that you have committee reports from the Finance Committee, Personnel and Governance, and Buildings and Grounds. Our next upcoming meetings, October 8th, is the WASB Regional Meeting at TOMA. October 14th, 28th, our October board meetings. November 5th is a board workshop at 5.30. And then November 11th and 23rd are our school board meetings in November. Board policies and administrative rules for review. Of course, we're gearing up for the year, so you've got a number of policies there that are up for assistance and um, or up for re review. And so, if you have any um, comments about any of them, any direction that you feel um, should be considered by the appropriate committees that are looking at them, please let us know. We can discuss any now. Just the idea is that we not go too far. I don't see any of them. Do you that are looking at any major changes of the ones that you've listed? I can speak perhaps a little bit to the personal and governance. Um, there's quite a list there as we start uh, really get into much of our work on policy revision. And uh, what you'll notice is some of those um, we'll be referencing going back and even working with our employee handbook. And, as we developed the employee handbook two years ago, we would come across policies like this, and in the handbook you'll see for many of these, it references the policy. So it'll be important that um, we make sure everything's aligned with that, with that thinking. So there's a few there with that, but otherwise, uh, I don't see anything that, that, that I would say tonight is necessarily going to um, be anything significantly different. Okay, then moving on to district administrator report. Well, in addition to the written report, I am going to take the opportunity just to add a few things tonight. And so this will be um, uh, longer than a 30 second report here. But um, Jay's at the table and I'm just gonna ask him um, regarding insurance, just to make a few comments, if you could, Jay. This is a brief update. Um, we're preparing a correspondence that goes out to staff. It's been uh, some time. Uh, July, we communicated to them in mass, and then there were many activities that took place uh, in the month of August. And uh, we think it's time uh, to send out a communication again. Dr. Carlson had suggested I share some of the content of that communication with you in advance. Um, so there'll be several items we'll highlight. There's been questions about the uh, plan booklet. If you have insurance at your employer, you know that there's a one-page summary, but then there's a, 
116 page in our case uh, plan booklet and um, while we had the uh, one page summary available to employees and this summer in July it was uh, our intent to before the September 1st um, enrollment date to have the 116 page document done but uh, we did not have it done at that point in time uh, despite our desire to have it done there were a number of changes with the new plan and enrollment and orientations for new members and you remember we added the HRA benefit at the kind of the 11th hour on that and uh, wanted to make sure that was done properly and then again uh, reviewing 116 pages took some time too so uh, that information is going out to employees this week they'll all be getting their um, booklets in fact um, it's also available uh, on the school district website if I just turn this screen on um, this is the school district's uh, website and here I'm at uh, uh, some drop-down menus for the uh, business office so insurance benefit information and uh, here's that document so we've tried to make uh, information oh you know you mail things and then you can't remember where you put it at home or your filing systems just not quite as good as you like it to be so uh, we're trying to make this information available uh, on the school district uh, website as well so that information uh, will go out this week and is currently available for those who um, would like to look at those details um, on the website um, there's also prescription drug information available there have been a number of questions about the prescription drug program and if you remember we did change deductibles there still is a zero uh, deductible on select prescription drugs and there were questions about that so we've created an entire uh, drop-down area on the website about prescription drug information to make that available to employees I want to remind you that uh, we do have uh, wellness as an initiative within our program and um, the annual wellness benefits within the insurance plan which uh, make available well care um, age and gender specific annual wellness checkups um, without copay and deductible obligations we'll be reminding staff of that uh, we had at one time contemplated a um, $50 debit card for people who participated in those annual wellness exams um, we're rethinking that um, studying some of the data that we have um, we're not sure there needs to be a lot of incentives to do that we have people uh, doing that where we think the incentives might be better used is in um, coaxing people to participate in health risk assessments and um, then sitting down with someone after that health risk assessment and reviewing what information is learned uh, by their personalized health risk assessment and what uh, lifestyle changes they might uh, best engage in uh, to improve their wellness uh, so that's coming up shortly uh, the health reimbursement uh, arrangement uh, was put in place and will be um, providing and that information is available on the website as well and then finally the wellness incentives uh, that we talked about as a part of this uh, program uh, today uh, were mailed out um, fitness club and fitness class reimbursement program announcements uh, where employees can uh, be re reimbursed up to uh, two hundred and forty dollars uh, for multiple family members for gym and fitness memberships and we'll be in October November and December kicking off our health risk assessment activities with some uh, meetings and um, as I mentioned conducting those screening and uh, reports and uh, trying to create some incentives for people uh, following those and the information we receive from them we'll be looking at uh, weight loss education on chronic diseases uh, smoking cessation and uh, other programs that match up best with what we learn um, about our staff through the health risk assessments now we do have a third party coming in uh, to do this assessment the district itself will only get cumulative data um, we're not getting information on each individual employee and what their risk assessments are uh, the, the company that's doing these assessments will know that and be able to help the person through those uh, we will be looking at it uh, kind of from that 10,000 foot view um, what's the greatest uh, area in which we should provide some uh, wellness opportunities for staff so that's uh, just a quick run through of where your staff can find information on the website and some of the information that will be going out uh, in a mailing to them this week so thank you Jane
uh, for that. And it was timely. I know that there had been some communication and questions um, that some of the board had received as well. And I know that that Jay shared a lot right there. This is part of my report. This isn't intended for to uh, result in board discussion um, <coughs> as it's uh, specifically not on the agenda as part of my report. So, but it is something that we continue to work on. And um, if you do have questions, please don't hesitate to get those to me. Or if you're contacted by employees, please direct them to, to the business office or to myself. We appreciate that. Uh, with that, as Julie Crackle makes her way up, we have one more thing to share with you. Um, and uh, by the way, I want to thank Christina for <coughs> lining up and organizing the event tonight with our reception. So thank you, Christina. It was uh, well done. And what Julie I just invited her kind of at the last minute. I had an opportunity to join uh, several, Mr. Bear and others, um, last week for uh, just a really neat opportunity for some of our students at the high school. And so uh, some of you have already seen it, I'm sure, on the news. But if we're successful, we're just going to play one of the clips. Real we're going to play one of the clips, but I just, I just want to yeah. read one little paragraph about the Let's Get to Work grant that they talk about in here. The Let's Get to Work grant is a Partnerships in Employment Systems Change grant awarded to Wisconsin and five other states from the Administration on Developmental Disabilities. The overall goals of this funding are, number one, to change policies that will increase integrated paid employment for youth with significant intellectual and developmental disabilities, uh, to increase integrated community employment rates of youth with intellectual and developmental disabilities, and to improve stakeholder attitudes about the employability of youth with intellectual and developmental disabilities. This is just the clip from the news. Um, just wanted to share with you. So, and again, um, just thank you to many people to make this possible. I got a little nervous uh, when I was over at the high school and Mr. Bear was dressed. Mr. Weber brought his uh, referee shirt and, and this was neat though because as the students came out of the building, uh, there was a banner for them to run through and to get out to their vehicles and Mr. Bear had a starter pistol and, <laughs> and I asked, have you made the staff aware that we're, it went just fine, so just a little nervous with that. But so thank you to all involved. It was a, just a great success for our kids. Um, that's that's it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Well, great. Then let me get back. I next item is a consent agenda. I think it is. So moving on to the consent agenda item, there are <coughs> seven items, and I would just note, Christina, ten. The number six, 10.6, .6, you need to change those to 11.6 and 11.7. And um, but we have seven items on the consent agenda. I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So is there a second? Second. I did not give you the opportunity to pull one out. If you wanted to pull one out, you certainly can. But if they're all OK, then. Sorry about that. I would just note under 10, under, I'm sorry, 11.6, <coughs> the first reading, the oath of office and the data management coming out of personnel and governance. Now, there were no changes to those. So we had a discussion about that because, you know, we from time to time find it, policies that don't require any changes. Um, not even a comma or a period or whatever and so we're still I guess 
we had asked Dr. Carlson to just check on that if we need to have them come through so that they then can be put into the schedule for um, the next review in three years or whatever. So I'm taking by the fact they're on the agenda that we there really aren't any changes to those. We're just approving them as they are. Um, but in order, if, so if you are working on a committee where you have those kind of policies that don't require any changes, they'll still have to come to the full board. We had just contacted WASP and uh, this suggestion, based on our process and procedures in place, it, it's probably best, um, but I think we, you could have a discussion as a board in the future if you wanted to put something in place to not have to go through that. You could do that. You, you can do that and it wouldn't involve too much uh, work to do that but for tonight thought we would just go ahead and move forward in this manner okay so yes I think I found well I don't hang on once because I had notes in my um in your folder yes yes but it's hard to you can't make notes in a PDF so I, when I was at home I had to make the changes and email them to myself so, <laughs> um, there was something about to a supervisor where you said the words to a supervisor twice in here Sorry, Jay, you know me with my attitude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which policy was it? It was, okay, it was under two, it was, it was employee conduct. Oh, and that was up above? Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, dang. Okay, never mind. A little slow tonight. But I, that you had but Ms. Jacobs, I, I would take that. Yeah, uh, okay. If you, I'll uh, tell you later. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll do these first. Perfect. So, any discussion or questions on the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none, a motion has been made and seconded to approve them as presented. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Mm -hmm. Motion passes. We are adjourned. I hope you didn't like it.